Join me today as I do some cooking and baking for the holidays. I'm going to be testing out some new recipes and see if we like them and see if it's something that we want to add to our holiday meals this year. The aprons on, let's go. Okay, this recipe is the butternut squash bake. All right, I'm going to get this peeled and then I'm going to slice it right down the center and open this bad boy up. Okay, I am going to slice these verticals into about one inch strips. Okay, I melted the butter and now I'm just going to chop up the garlic. Okay, I'm gonna combine the garlic with the butter and we're gonna add the breadcrumbs and the Parmesan cheese. We're gonna mix this together. This is gonna be that yummy crumbly topping. There's the topping. Snag a pan that will fit all that squash. All right, I'm gonna spray that down with some cooking spray. And I'm gonna layer these in and do the best that I can. And then we sprinkle this on each slice and then we'll put some salt and pepper on top. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle some salt and pepper. And this is gonna go in the oven for 45 to 50 minutes until the squash is cooked all the way through and the topping is gonna turn golden brown. Oh, can you hear the sizzle? This smells so good. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. I even suggest maybe putting a drizzle of maple syrup on this. Yum. Okay, next we're gonna make the Six Sisters Mom sweet potato casserole. Okay, I'm gonna peel and chop these sweet potatoes. Now we're gonna get this in some water and boil them up. And they'll cook for about 10 or 15 minutes just until they're tender. You're gonna drain them, get them in a large bowl, and now we're gonna add some more of the ingredients. The granulated sugar, fourth a cup of that evaporated milk, three tablespoons of that melted butter, so I have two on reserve for the crust. A half a teaspoon of salt. And then you're gonna put a teaspoon of the vanilla. We're gonna beat this together. All right, you're gonna add two eggs. And then we're gonna beat this well together with the eggs. Tried to get it as smooth as I possibly could. Now we're gonna get this in a pan. I'm really excited to try this because Sweet potato casserole is something that we really don't make. I've had it before at other functions that people have brought, but I've never made it. It was never a go-to for my family. We're gonna whisk together the flour, which is the third a cup, and then two thirds cup packed brown sugar. We just need an eighth a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to put in the last two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna crumble this up, and then we're gonna get this on top of that casserole. This is gonna bake for 25 minutes until golden brown. When it was done, for 45 seconds, I had it under the boiler, crisp that up, look at that. Okay, I'm gonna let it set for a minute and then I'm gonna dish up and give it a taste. Oh my goodness, this smells so, so good. So let's give it a taste. Oh, yum. Oh wow, that is so good. I need to start making sweet potato casserole. This is delicious. To me, this is like, yeah, you could use this as a side dish, but also a dessert. This is amazing. <laughs> I could honestly put some whipped topping on here. This is delicious, but alongside all of your holiday hams and turkeys, this is, I think, a great side dish. Way to go, Six Sisters. This is delicious. We're gonna start on some desserts and we're gonna make an orange sweet potato cake. I am going to juice and zest this orange. We're gonna save some of the zest of this orange for the frosting. I'm gonna save all this zest. I'm gonna put that to the side and save that. So let's get this juiced up and see how much juice we get out of it. So what we need now, I have like about a fourth a cup of juice. So now we need to add enough liquid, so water, um, to make about a half cup. Now I'm gonna set this aside. I have a cup of those yams, or sweet potatoes. It has a lot of liquid. I tried to drain a lot of it out, but that's okay. I'm just gonna give this a good mush. It's nice that they're already cooked. So yes, you can use regular yams, just cook them down, mash them. I'm gonna add that orange liquid. 
in. And then I'm gonna add the yellow cake mix. We're gonna add two teaspoons of the pumpkin pie spice. And then we're gonna need a cup of milk. Oh yeah. Oh, that pumpkin pie spice in there. This is smelling good. And then we're gonna need one third cup of the oil. Let's add our eggs in, and that's three eggs. Okay, we're gonna beat this on low speed for 30 seconds, and then beat on medium speed for two more minutes. This is a 15 inch by 10 inch pan, so this will fit the cake really good. So I'm gonna spray this. Oh, I hope this doesn't uh, bubble over. This was one inch thick, so, oh man. Hmm, we're gonna take, should I take a chance or should I take some out? Oh no. All right, I did take some out and I can make um, some muffins with it, but I already tasted the batter and oh my gosh, you guys, it's so good. This is going in a 350 degree oven for 18 to 22 minutes and hopefully this will not go over because this is not exactly an inch deep. Would you look at that? Thank goodness I took some out. It would have definitely overflowed. We're gonna let this cool here. The tray's on a cooling rack. And while that's doing it, I will uh, make the frosting for it. I am not gonna make as much frosting as they say, because I just have a feeling I am gonna be having some leftover frosting. What I'm doing, <laughs> in the description below, you'll have the basic recipe, but I'm only gonna put a half a package of softened cream cheese and a fourth cup of butter. And then I'm doing a cup and a fourth of powdered sugar. Okay, so it's asking for orange extract. I don't have that. So what I could do is just put a little bit of lemon in and then this um, orange extract, or this orange zest in. But I'll put a little bit of lemon because I don't have orange. Okay, now I'm just gonna beat this together. Even without that orange extract, it was so good, it's delicious. And with having the bit of the lemon extract in there, it's so good. So I'm gonna try to get this in something to pipe it onto the cake. I don't know if I wanna spread it or pipe it. I did put the icing in a Ziploc bag and just piped it on. Cutting it was kinda of hard. I mean, I let it cool a lot, so it's not pretty after I cut it, but that's okay. But let's take a piece out and give this a taste. It's so pretty, it smells so good. Oh, it's so moist, oh my goodness. Oh no. <laughs> you guys, it's so good. And it's not overly sweet. Like the cake is not, so the frosting really gives it that extra sweetness that it, not that it needs, but oh my goodness. This is so good, you guys. Give this a try. This is a great fall dessert. I mean, use it at Christmas. It's good. Right, this is definitely going in the book as a keeper. Wow, wow, wow. It's time to make some cherry pie bars. Okay, in a mixing bowl, we're gonna beat together the butter, the sugar, until it's creamy. Okay, next we're gonna add the eggs. We're gonna add them one at a time, and we're gonna beat these. Then we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of the almond and the vanilla. The vanilla and the almond. So we're gonna add the salt in. It is a half a teaspoon of salt. And then a cup and a half of flour. Combine this very well. Looks like we got a batter going here. So that is done. All right, I'm gonna use this baking sheet. And this is a 12 by eight and a half. The recipe doesn't really specify a size. And I actually um, didn't double this recipe, so I think it'll fit in here. I'm gonna spray my pan. Then we're gonna put a cup and a half of the batter at the bottom and save the rest that we're gonna put on top. I'm gonna spread this out. Okay, we're gonna spread the pie filling down on it. I'm gonna take the rest of the batter and just not spread it on, but just kind of place it on, if that makes sense. All right, that's as good as it's gonna get. 
and we're gonna put this in the oven at 350 degrees. My recipe says 40 to 50 minutes, but I don't know if that's the whole processing time. So we'll keep an eye on it. We are going to make the glaze for on top. We're gonna need a half a cup of sifted powdered sugar. So I have this weird thing here. <laughs> sifted. I do have a bigger sifting machine. It's like, do I really wanna take that out? All right, I'll do what they say. So I have my sifter and we need a half a cup of sifted powdered sugar. It's like Christmas, it's kind of fun to watch. Can you see that? We're gonna add a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla and a fourth a teaspoon of almond extract and one tablespoon of milk. All right, we're gonna whisk this together. Ooh, look at that glaze, nice. Smells good too. And then I'm just going to, with my whisk, just put little bits throughout it. I think I'm gonna like this more than just cherry pie. Cause a piece of cherry pie, like that's a lot for me. But this, just getting a little square of this, I think I'm gonna like better. Look how beautiful. All right, now that it's cooled, let's give it a taste. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Look how good and clean it comes off the cookie sheet. Oh my goodness. We gotta taste this. Oh wow. All right, that is amazing. The almond in that glaze really adds something to this. Perfect. This is gonna be great for the holidays. It'll be just as yummy during the summer, especially late summer during cherry season. So good. Give it a try. Okay, I'm starting on the pumpkin pie and the blueberry pie, and I'm using some pre-made pie crust, store-bought pie crusts to help me out today. So I had them out getting the chill off of them. All right, I am starting on the blueberry pie. So I have enough here to make two blueberry pies. So there are eight cups of blueberries in here. And then in this bowl, I have brown sugar and flour and cinnamon and nutmeg. Now the full video and recipe for this is down below for you guys. So I'm gonna mix this up really quick and get it in the pie shells. I don't have any lemons, I'm out, which is so weird, but um, you usually put lemon zest in here, but today I'm not gonna be doing that, but you will need some lemon juice for the blueberries, and that is four teaspoons, but I will be doing eight. This is my favorite blueberry pie recipe. I'm gonna get this into two pie shells. I added, uh, two teaspoons of butter to the tops of the pies and now I'm just getting the crusts on. I am done and I'm gonna wrap these up, get them in the freezer and we're good to go. And the last thing I have to do is the pumpkin pie. I'm making pumpkin pie and I am using Livy's um, pumpkin right here. I don't use the pumpkin pie mix. I end up adding my own seasonings in. I really think this tastes better than the pumpkin pie mix. I'm gonna be making four pumpkin pies and we're gonna bake them and then when they cool, we're gonna freeze them. That way, when it is time to eat them <laughs> and we wanna use them, I take them out of the freezer, I let them sit for a while, get the chill off, boom. We've got pumpkin pie. Now, last year I did share with you making pumpkin pie from scratch from these really yummy sweet pumpkins that I found. So I will leave that video down below for yes. Here are the pumpkin pies. They have cooled down completely. So now all I need to do is wrap them and get them in the freezer. These are ready for eating for Thanksgiving and Friendsgiving. I could be making more. I mean, the kids, they love it. So, but for the time being, we have these four and more than likely we'll end up getting a Costco pumpkin pie because that is delicious too. All right, friends, that was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope it gave you some ideas and some new recipes for the holiday season. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me and we will see you soon. Bye.